uh, Solo Beach 4 in the 2021 Etoile de Bessege. People Ganna won it. Uh, solo breakaway within nine kilometers to go. Absolutely launched it. He was in the break all day. He whacked it at the end and has managed to stay away solo. Had about 10, 10 second gap tw uh, to 20 second gap on the field, I believe. Um, and then it ended up being 10 seconds at the, at the end. So we look at the power file. It's unbelievable to be able to anal analyze this. Um, and I'm very, very happy that people Ganna um, keep some of his files up. He doesn't do give his time trial data away, which I do understand, but for the road racing, super interesting. So anyway, we can, we'll just, you know, 150K, three and a half hours, 1800 meters climbing. It's not a flat day, not a day that you'd always say suits Ganna because he's a, he's a big boy, but nonetheless, very, very strong rider. Uh, 400 watts normalized for three and a half hours is very, very, very strong. There's no doubt about that. Um, not many riders in the world can really do that. Uh, in my opinion, maybe, maybe more than you'd expect, but not, not crazy amounts. Um, 4,900 kilojoules in three and a half hours is, is very, very, like a huge energy expenditure. Probably one of the largest you'll ever really see. I don't think many people can, you know, just output that much energy. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll look at the stages as a, as a whole. So he's got the K1, the Monte Chateau Allegre, um, which is 493 watts for 11 and a half minutes, which is, which is very, very strong. A normalized 508. So you can see it's, it's not a flat effort at all. There's some big accelerations towards the, um, towards the uh, beginning of the climb. And I think he, he then probably settles into the rhythm. I didn't watch all the stage. I don't think this was on um, TV, but I'm pretty sure he probably got in a breakaway around here where that big attack is. And then he looked like he's sort of doing three and off here because the power's a lot, a lot, lot smoother. Uh, but 5.8 watts per kilo for an hour and a half minutes is very strong. In my opinion, he probably does weigh a bit more than 85 kilos at this moment in time, just because, you know, at the beginning of the season, don't need to be in top shape. And like on Strava, they're obviously gonna put their best weight, not their like actual weight the whole time. Uh, but anyway, if we just look at the stage sort of as a whole, uh, it's like 400 normalized. But if we look before sort of his attack, how many how many kilojoules he's doing, his attack was just after the downhill there. Um, he did 4,000 kilojoules of work before his attack, which is obviously really, 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 really big. Um, I can't quite show that 4,000 kilojoules, like normally people say, what's a 20 minute power after two and a half thousand kilojoules? But obviously 4,000 kilojoules is a lot of, lot of work. Um, and it's really incredible the numbers that he does at the end. Uh, but if we look at, so they basically came towards the finishing circuit and at the at finishing circuit, we got two attacks by Direct Energy and a, a, um, a Cannondale EF Pro lad got a lot across as well. I believe it was Alberto Betio, Pierre Latour, and someone else got across. And the original break had like Perez, Dries Devon, and a couple others. Um, and yeah, so anyway, like it was a really, really strong break to begin with, but then they got joined. And if we look at the, like the last, the last bit, it was like 450 normalized for the last 47 minutes which is just bonkers. And potentially you might say normalize isn't the best measure, but even X power, which is basically just like a different algorithm, but basically says it's slightly less. But even so, 445 watts for the last hour is just ridiculous. Like, I just don't think anyone, I just can't believe it. I can do 450 watts for three minutes. And I'm like, that is like so, so hard. It does a 47, it's just ridiculous, man. Um, but anyway, it was like, it was really hard day is my point, the whole day when they go into the finishing circuits, they really stepped on the gas to try and stay away. Um, obviously, you know, this bit after they got the break here, like that's for, for Ghana, 350 watts is like 70, 80% of threshold. It's, it's nothing crazy. But, you know, just through and off 42 average for these lads isn't isn't crazy hard. I mean, it's hilly, but even so, like, you know, on the climbing parts here, you can see um, he's doing 400 watts on the climbs. I mean, less than five watts per kilo on a three minute climb. Like, it's not, that's not that hard. But obviously towards the end, it really, really starts to kick up again. Um, and if we look at the attack, it's it's interesting where he times it. So this is where his attack is, about, uh, just where the power spike is at nine, like there. And you can see it comes off off the descent, um, and he's they sort of turn left onto this road here. Um, so is it is almost exactly where he goes. So you can see they're going along and going along, and then that this is where the power spike is just after they turn left. But as you can see again, it's not a crazy strong attack. It's not like he's doing a you know fifteen hundred watts. Um, he sort of just ups the power gently um, and gets away. And then if you watch the, it live, um, unfortunately, I can't show the footage because I've been getting copyright issues with Flow Sports. Not a fan of them. But, you know, we won't, we won't say too much bad about Flow Sports. But anyway, the point is, is that if you watch the footage, he didn't launch it out the saddle. He just sort of rolled off. And before everyone knew it was too late, the boys are like, oh, God, because they know if Ghana goes away, like they're not getting him back unless they go straight away. So every single person in the break rolled turn straight away just as hard as they could go you could be like it was like they were literally sprinting to check it across the, there were two direct energy riders both of them were like we need to get across this gap as quickly as possible because they know if he gets five seconds gone they're not bringing him back and we're gonna see why so this attack here um was about 600 watts for a minute 
And like, come on, you're not getting 600 watts back for a minute. Like to, to get that back, you've got to be doing 700 at least on the front. Okay, you'd argue that the smaller riders like Pierre Latour and Betiol, well, Betiol's still quite big, but you know what I mean? They're probably more aero than Ganna, even though he's a big boy. Like Ganna's aero just will be larger on a road bike because I'm mean, even on TT bike maybe, but he's just got so much horsepower, it doesn't matter. But you know what I mean? So they wouldn't have to do you know 700 to get back. They might only have to do 600, but even so, that's really, really hard to do. Um, and you've got to act so, so quickly. And obviously they didn't. And so he got the gap. And this is the thing, if Gann had someone on his wheel, it's such a different thing because they're both of them, you know, Gann is not just going to go full. He's going to, you know, ride tactically. But that's the thing. As soon as he gets away solo, like Tony Martin back in the day, like once they're off, they're so strong on their own. They're so aero on their own. It's really, really hard to get them back. So if we look from his attack, he did 509 watts for six minutes 50. It was like a, a slight uphill here, 1.7%. So it's basically flat. And then there was a climb here. Uh, which we'll get into in a minute. Uh, but six watts per kilo for six minutes 50 is still like a very strong effort, just watts per kilo wise. But obviously the power he's doing is is bonkers again. Um, and if we look at the climb here, he was doing 500 watts for three and a half minutes up this bar, you know, close to six watts per kilo um, to really, you know, push on and get past. And that's the thing is like to get him back now, it was the gap went from like, you know, five, 10, just got out to 25 seconds between the chases. And the peloton was like, you know, 20, 20 seconds back on the chases before Ghana went. Ghana went and immediately had 20 seconds on them. And like they had full teams chasing. And then we go on to the little descent. Still does 430 on the descent because to be fair, it wasn't crazy, crazy technical. Uh, you can see here, it's like pretty much a straight road. 1.9% um, negative thing. And then we've got the final climb uh, up to the finish, uh, which again, he, he really just put it in the big dog and whacked it and did 600 watts almost. Um, for two minutes, which again is like uh, just ridiculous numbers. Um, seven watts per kilo for the last two minutes. It's still like, that's the thing is like, you're like, oh yeah, like obviously 600 watts, but he's huge, but you're still like seven watts per kilo for two minutes. At the end of the stage is still like very respectable numbers. Uh, but if we go all up for the last nine kilometers from this attack here to the end, it's 511 normalized for 12 minutes, 50 and 480, um, 490 for 12 minutes, 35. I mean that's just that's just ridiculous, and I mean there's just no one coming close to this on a day on a day like this. You know, Ghana gets in the break. You just you just have to be on a swivel. Like you just have to think we cannot let him go. You let him go, gone. There's like it is impossible to get him back. Even like in my opinion, if they had five people all on the same team pulling really strong turns, it would be close. Like if you if they let him get five ten seconds, like he is that strong. Um, so yeah, in my opinion. It's it's like a it's just like a, a game changing move. It's like when Froome did his attacks in twenty fifteen. You can do whatever you want, but when the boy goes, it's physiologically impossible to beat him. And I think with Ganna, it's the same. Like if he gets into the break and gets like ten seconds, I just I can't see how you bring it back. Fair enough, you have like five sprint teams on a pan flat road. Then I can understand that. And you know, in the tour, let's say they're all really motivated. But like a stage like this in Etoile the Bersage. Technical roads, like just a twists and turns, not everyone's motivated. No. Ghana goes, Ghana wins. Done. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy it. There's a TT tomorrow. We should have well into power data. He did 470 watts for 16 minutes, which was about 6.9 watts per kilo the other day up uh, Valdebo in Calpe. So I'm pretty expecting big things from him. He should should take the overall. Ghana won't upload, I don't think, but we might have well into we have to one upload, but we'll have a couple other big names. So if it looks like it's worth it, then I'll go through the power data. Uh, but if not, we've got Australian National Crit Championships, women's and men's coming up this week, I believe. We should have power data for the men's winners. I just need to sort out with Garmin Verb. Women's, I couldn't find any power data from the top three, but if anyone does have their data on Strava, let me know and I can sync that all up. So anyway, cheers for watching. If you've got any more questions or comments or anything else, leave them below and we'll see you in the next one here. Eh?